Hey everybody, welcome to the Kaya 959 podcast with myself, Pila Sande Sitlaba. We're in the Kaya kitchen today trying to cook up a storm and we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you about how we've gotten these dishes alongside uh, this lovely chat. We've got two special guests with us today, superstars in South African football in their own right. Spusa Sofila Gazi, we'll start with you. Uh, multi title winning um, player with Mamelodi Sundowns, been in the game for a long time. Uh, and of course, Kaylin Swart, <laughs> who's uh, an African Cup of Nations winner with Banyana Banyana uh, and plenty of experience, having gone to two World Cups now. Yeah. Eh? Two World Cups. Look at you. <laughs> Kabeha's finest. Thank you for, her, for, for um, availing yourselves and, and being here today, Vila. You are? Well? Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I'm very well. I'm yeah. very well. Kaylin, you are? Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty special day. Yeah. I mean, we're coming to eat at Kaya Fair. Wow. <laughs> you brought us on. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Okay, why, why don't we just take a seat and then try and get into this conversation and, and, and of course share the goodies that we've uh, been able to prepare here. Kaylin, I, I think let's start with you because you know, it's a, it's a tricky time at the moment. There's a lot of hurt, there's a lot of emotions uh, happening at the moment. Um, just talk to us about the couple of weeks that have gone past now where Olympic qualification was on the line, went to Nigeria, didn't go so well, came back, didn't go so well here in South Africa as well, finally missed out on Olympic qualification. Just explain the hurt that you guys would have felt with that. Uh, yeah, I've, I mean, obviously not qualifying is pretty heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, we've worked so hard over the you know, last couple of months trying to you know, get through all the qualifiers up to the last round. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's pretty tough. It's still hard to take. I mean, it's only been about a week now. Yeah. So, yeah, it's still very fresh. But, yeah, I think, I mean, we spoke off air and we, we did say, like, there's always a reason for something to yeah. happen. And I do believe there's a reason why things happen. And, yeah, I think we'll bounce back pretty, pretty swiftly. Yeah. I mean, we're all pretty good mature like mentally and we have matured so much as individuals so yeah i think it's always gonna be a blow but yeah, yeah we gotta move on now and hope for the best C can you pinpoint what could have possibly gone wrong on those two legs of qualification i don't just think something went wrong i just think you know on the day um, i think nigeria clinical, yeah. especially when we played in nigeria yeah. um, you know the conditions of pretty tough yeah. um, you know the heat the fields all of that but at the end of the day I think it, we had so many chances yeah. Um, but yeah I, I think even if it went on for 120 minutes I don't think we were gonna score yeah. it was it wasn't our day yeah um, but yeah I just think you know we try to give everything yeah. Um, but yeah I just I feel we could have given a little bit more but yeah at the end of the day the zero zero draw didn't really benefit us yeah. And I think if we went to penalties, I probably would have pulled it one. I, uh, <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. I mean, you, both of you are from Quebec. I mean, it runs, it runs the Eastern Cape, this thing. Right? Yeah, no. And funny enough, we live a couple streets away from really? each other. Yeah. So, yeah, we kind of grew up in the same. Okay. So. Well, hold that because we're going to go back on to that because okay. I'm very much biased. I'm, I'm from the Eastern Cape myself, so I'm very interested in that. Uh, please dish up for yourself while, while we try and, uh, you know, go through this conversation. Vila, we spoke about, you know, in, in the intro about you being, um, you know, multiple title winning uh, player with Mamelo de Sundowns for so long and, and for a majority of your career, you've enjoyed so much success. It's a bit of a downtime now for Osbusos of Villagas in, in terms of like playing um, and also playing at the highest level in South African football. How have been, how has the, the, the past couple of years been for Villa uh, since leaving Mamelodi Sundowns, going to Sukukuna United? How's that transition been in, in trying to, you know, remember that I'm still worthy and I'm still somebody that has contributed so much to South African football? Now look, uh, First way I could touch from it's the word worthy. Yeah. Still very much worthy, uh, regardless of uh, either coming towards the end yeah. or 
I still have to make that decision, you know. But yeah. at the moment, I'm still enjoying the game. Uh, yeah. There's still so much passion from my side. Still like to compete, still like to win games, yeah. still like to go to training sessions and compete yeah. in five po uh, position, you know. So pretty much still in love with the game at this point in time. So um, there's no questions about it of it coming towards an end yeah. or any signs of it, yeah. right? Uh, at this point in time, as I say, I still love to compete. Yeah. And um, of course, I'm um, preparing, of course, for for the season at this point in time with Skukuna United. Yeah. But uh, of course, having to move from Sundowns to you know to Skukuna also, yeah. uh, but it's a, it's a transition that happened, you know. Yeah. And I think for my side, I pre-planned it. I pre-planned it because mm -hmm. of uh, uh, at the end of the day, you know, when I play this game for for the rest of our life, yeah. you know. So I had to like putting certain things in place so that when it happens and that time when it comes, I'm ready for it. You know? So, but it's, at this point in time, as I say. Still love to compete. Yeah. Still uh, have the passion for the game. Yeah. Still like to win a few before, before, before. before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to bring in the other word. I'm just no, no, saying. We'll, before. We'll, we'll speak about it. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get it as an exclusive here. But <laughs> Villa, you know, it's it's so interesting, and I think both of you can can answer this question. You know, about going from the highest of highs and then trying to navigate those 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 changes and the and the swift changes that a football career comes with you know you come from a high of going to the world cup missing out uh, on olympic qualification winning all those titles with sundowns and then you know you find yourself not really playing that much um lately how do you deal with those highs and lows and trying to navigate it's that's a loaded one <laughs> yeah because i think it varies from individual to, an, to yeah. an individual so um obviously the mental toughness is something that every athlete should you know yeah. require it's, it's a requirement to yeah. you know be at your best but um I know, think don't be shy don't be shy but yeah i think going from you know the highest of highs to the lowest of lows yeah. it also brings out the character in a lot of people yeah. and i think for us as athletes there's so many things there's so many factors that we have to deal with yeah. you know winning a game or losing a game yeah. Um, but yeah i think it's just maturity and also just working on one you know the mental side of the game because yeah. lately i want to say in the last couple of years i think the mental aspect of football yeah. or any sport is so much more evident now yeah. than it's ever been and you know they're always saying football's evolving yeah. and i think that's also where us as people we have to evolve too um, so yeah, I think it's just working on ourselves, but yeah, it's it's really tough because like it's the roller coasters yes. and the emotions you run, your yeah. emotions run so high, yeah. and um, you know trying to you know be at a neutral standpoint to yeah. say you know what, okay, I've experienced this, yeah. I experienced that, but yeah, it's it's hard, yeah. it's really hard. Yeah. And yourself, Villa, how do you how do you navigate those things? I mean. Kaylin speaks about it and trying to get that maturity and the balance between that. But do you have somebody that helps you with that? You know, is it something that you have to go and sit down with yourself or sit with someone that is more professional in these things and try and figure out where you are in, in your in your life, mentally, physically? I'd say it comes with experience. Yeah. I think it comes with experience. It comes with the face. It depends what you're going through. It yeah. can either be in a situation whereby like anybody wants to win yeah on its own that on its own needs mental strength because yes. how i say about that mental strength means how do you now keep the consistency of winning yes then then what on the other side of it there's losing yeah. what happens now when you start losing a game yeah so now you need to switch back and yeah. then try to put your mind into like i've lost the game how mm -hmm. do you then come up from it so yeah. in general this thing is an element of life either way yeah. you know there's winning is losing yeah. uh, times whereby you win in life that yeah. days whereby you you lose at the yeah. same time so it's winning and you just have to find yourself that this thing has an up and down yeah. just have to find the consistency through it and, yeah. uh, and then you grow from it and you have lessons through winning you have lessons through losing so yeah. for myself i've had like as i say like all of them yeah. they were there you know there are times where you're up there are times where you're down but yeah. for me like even when those days like it's my downtime like yeah. i'm feeling it that's where like sometimes my character comes up because yeah. i think most of in my career, most of the times I've seen myself on the sideline, having to have struggled with my two surgeries for my yes. knee, my Achilles. Yeah. You know, so they don't its own. It was mental strength, and I knew that situation found me at the team that I was winning things. Yes. 
So they had on his own and said, I cannot sit outside yeah. you know, while these guys are doing great things. Yeah. So I needed to put myself in a position where I heal myself, yeah. get back into it and start competing. Yeah. So I was the same, man. And from that also, you take lessons from it. Yeah. You put it in through life. You, know, you put it through life because of a life on its own, it can shake you. Yeah. So how you stand up and fight again, you know, with this famous quote, get up and fight. Yeah. You know, and music we listen to. Just to... Uh, Are you a quotes, man? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. You I'm just saying. Yeah. Hang up on not your really, own. not really. Mm -hmm. But uh, you do have like certain things yeah. that you try to follow, certain inspiration whereby yeah. you feel like you're losing in a day. You yeah. know, try to find those pick up uh, codes or pick up lines yeah. or anything. Or music. You listen to music? Yeah, lots, a lot. Yeah. Uh, what kind of music? Fast hip hop, hip hop. I've yeah. listened to your KFM playlist. Yeah. It's a bit uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, t I'm gonna tell the composer. I am gonna tell the musical. <laughs> I'm joking. There's a bit of everything. There's on a bit it. of everything. Yeah. 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 Caleb, talk to me about you know coming from, um, you know, Quebec, and I asked Ronwin this uh, a, c a couple of years ago about uh, coming from PE, especially from from far away, and, and trying to come and and make your name for yourself. Dane Clayton also had a conversation with him about moving from. Yeah home and going to a foreign province the language <laughs> is different there's so many people you know there's, there's a lot of traffic and what was the decision for you then to say you know what Kaylin if I'm going to make it in this football thing I needed to come out of my comfort zone and go to a place that's going to push me to develop myself my game and try and make it in in, in this football industry funny enough oh all three of us have a similar path, yeah. you know, going from PE to an academy mm. and then going from the academy, you know, branching out. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. At 14, I had no idea that football was actually something because that I really wanted to do because yeah. I was playing cricket at the time. Okay. And I was playing Eastern Province cricket. Fast bowler. Yeah, both. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and cricket was really picking up for yeah. me. And at that time, I really didn't really see myself, you know, playing football at yeah, the highest level. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed playing in the streets with the boys, yeah. and, you know, playing locally. But um, yeah, at 14, that was probably the biggest decision yeah. we had to make, um, you know, leaving my parents. Um, yeah. And yeah, and that was the first time I actually left home. So the first couple of months were rough in Pretoria. <laughs> <Yeah>. I won't. <laughs> you got on the bus yeah. and, and you left. Yeah, and I think my parents also knew you know if i for me to really grow yeah and become the sports person that they wanted me to be yes. um i think they knew that m me leaving pe mm. and leaving their home was probably the best decision yeah. for me um and also ed education wise yeah. um you know tuck sport high school they provided us with you know elite education yeah um i was able to go to university from that so yeah, yeah i think also there was a lot of things but also just personal growth yeah. you know and i think my parents are very big on independence yes. and um for me to become independent 14 15 is crazy yeah, yeah. you know not a lot of girls have that opportunity yeah. to you know experience that yeah. life um away from family yes. and away from you know people that you can actually lean on yeah. physically but yeah. um yeah i think that's why i am where i am and how i am yeah. because of you know not just my parents but also our house mothers yes. at you know the hbc yes. and also the teachers that really shaped yeah. us and shaped me um but yeah it's just and also the obviously the fact that you know sports wasn't as big yeah in pe um and especially women's soccer yeah and yeah but i always knew that football was gonna take over yeah, yeah. um but i think at that time i really didn't see it you just enjoyed bowling yeah, fast i enjoyed and batting, yes and yes and, and i enjoyed it <laughs> um but yeah it's just it, it just brings out you know yeah. a better side and a different side of you just because you gotta you know deal with things differently yeah, because yeah. now you don't have your parents yeah. you don't have that support that you know your mom and your dad would give you yeah. but yeah it just helps you grow and i think I grew up pretty fast, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it just gives you that independence, but also it, it creates resilience in yeah, within you, absolutely. because you know you constantly have to you know s step up and yeah. make sure that you know you don't let the people down yeah, back yeah, home. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a lot. I mean, we've been dealing with pressure since a yeah, very young <laughs> age. <laughs> Fourteen. I mean, I was uh, still I was still driving cars around and yeah. you know, dirt cars around at fourteen. Villa, a young Spurs of Villa Gazi. When did he fall in love with with the game and 
knew that this is the career path that he wanted to take? Um, and who was instrumental in making that decision alongside you? Because it's a personal one, but it needs a lot of guidance. As Kaylin is saying, you know, you've got to consult with so many people. You've got to earn, you know, sort of the faith of people to say, you can go and do this. We back you enough for you to be able to make a success of this thing. It was within our streets, and yeah. it's in our culture in Soweto, yeah. how football it came about. You know, yeah. the famous Jomo Son, your famous Dr. Kumar, yeah. uh, just your history of Orlando Pirates, mm. Kaiser Chiefs, and other stories. And my uncle also used to play. So it was just a culture, a background from, yeah. from our streets, you know, in Midlands, uh, Soweto in general, yeah. the culture of playing football gassy football uh, it was just beautiful yeah so i myself while uh, growing up i think yeah i think very young at a young age i'd be lying maybe or i'm not lying maybe i think around about four to five really? four to five yeah four to five i think yeah four to five i think it just it was a passion it was it, it was it, i would say now because of now maturity yeah. now yeah. but i'd say somewhere there even if i could go deeper thoughts and say somewhere there four to five and yeah. just it just grew with me it's just just a gift and I was born with it and from then it just spoke to me because uh, right. my brother used to play and then I used to like my brother was old yeah so I used to like play with his with his uh with his follow friends. him around yeah so I'd follow him around <laughs> so it's like his friends are much older yes. than of course with me yeah. so then of course then now it means I'm even playing with people that are older, much older yeah. than me and it means gradually I'm improving mm. I'm getting better mm. and better and mm. better and of, of course when people start to even recognize that while well, play because you know within the streets you know your two and stuff like that yes. your uncles <laughs> will come out and watch and say there's something over there yeah. and they'll start praising and saying there's something to yeah yeah and of course i myself uh, was not even cocky about it yeah. i never used to come inside there it was just it just it just passes me yeah. i'm not even listening to it because i'm it, not even i'm just doing what i do i'm yeah. just playing football i don't care who's saying i'm gifted or what i'm yeah. just playing but people that see and recognize they are the ones singing the praises and then from then it just grew this thing and then of course with the parents being there of yeah. course one thing the wall is preach is school yeah. you know, as much as you play this game for us what's important is just to finish your school yeah. finish your school get your school work done and yeah. everything like that we'll be fine yeah. and of course within that of course you find and try to maneuver there and yeah. there, getting to trouble. <laughs> <laughs> there's always trouble involved. Yeah, there's always trouble. <laughs> then you didn't do your house yeah. cures and stuff like that, but you know you're always gonna be that naughty child, yeah. and, and that's that's the passion where it lies for me, having to go with the background uh, door on the yeah. other side while yeah. the mother is still on the other side. To go and kick a ball yeah. when you're not supposed to. Be. And I, of course, I could see that she's doing laundry on the other side, yeah. and I have to use that entrance so that she could see I passed there. But I use the other side, yeah. you know, just to be smart. Yeah. And that on its own, it was just passion, and yeah. it just showed that you wanted to do this yeah. thing. But of course, at the same time, the guidance of the parents, yeah. preaching, school, school, which is very important because of. It's a, it's a, you need to have backup, yeah. you know, you need to be, and Kaylin also would also confess, I mean, yeah. if there's one moment where you find yourself sidelined with injuries, and then you ask yourself at that stage, That's it. if this thing is, needs to be, it needs to be done, what yeah. am I going to do? Yeah. And then there's no backup. Yeah. I'm not saying even with education there is, but I'm just yeah. saying the backup to help yourself something maneuver, to that, something yeah. to follow on also, mm -hmm. that, that anything can happen. Yeah. You know, there are times where I ask myself, oh, if this thing ends, with what I've went through with those injuries, yeah. this could have been time out for me. Yeah. And I would have found myself in a situation whereby like, I'm lost, yeah. you know? So it's, I, I emphasize also for the upcoming ones also, yeah. it's important, it's very important. As much as I was doing my, my high level football, I was also, even with my studies, also doing the balance. Yeah. You know? And at the same time, you're making them happy. And, yeah. I, and I believe that's where you get your blessings also. Yeah. You know, once they are happy that you're listening to them, that's where you get your blessings. Yeah. And your ways will start being opened enough yeah. for you to, find yourself playing in the, um, in the premiership. I, I want you guys to, to, to emphasize on, on that point. I mean, because it's not something that's common in, in South African football, that footballers think about the next chapter and what in, it entails and, and how to start that next chapter. I think a lot of people think about the next chapter when it's happened, you know, yeah. and when it's happening, closer. you know, closer to the time and you say, okay, this is my final season. And that's it. You don't know what's beyond that. You, you, you know, run out your contract and then you'll see what happens after that. How important is it to get to a point while you're still playing to recognize that this thing is only, if you're lucky, 15 years? Yeah. I think it's also just the mentality of knowing that 
a lot of things end. Yeah. You know, there's always an end to something. Um, you know, schooling ends at some point mm. in your life, you know. Um, you know, football, any sport, mm. it ends at some point. And yes, we do get older and, you know, you, you think differently. You, got, yeah. you get smarter about stuff. You find a different perspective of life mm. and, you know, just the things around you. But I'm a big advocate of, you know, finding an outlet. Yeah. Because, yes, like for us, obviously, we're footballers. Mm. Um, we tend to, football's our life, yeah. yes. But we do have a life outside of football. Yes. And I think that's also the difference between, you know, the successful ones and the ones that, you know, fall through the cracks yeah. once their career is done. But I think it's also just knowing the, you know, financial literacy. Yep. I think that's massive. Mm. Um, you know, just knowing where to invest, mm. who to invest mm. in and, you know, investing in yourself, I yeah. think, is, is, a, is a massive thing. Mm. Um, you know, for sports people, because, you know, our careers are so short and, you know, injury can happen at any time. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's just finding an outlet, but also just knowing who to trust and who to have in your mm -hmm. circle. Um, but, yeah, I think financial literacy is one thing that, you know, I think if everyone could have it, yeah. I think we'd be a different society. Yeah. When, when did you find out that you, you could... You could do what Kaden is saying, you know, the financial literacy side, the importance of it. I think for me, it, it came at um, my first season, my yeah. first season at Bidvest Vets, uh, my breakthrough season. Yeah. Where, like, uh, for me as a kid, I think I broke through there when I was 18. Yeah. So life happened. You know, got Quick. injured quickly, yeah. immediately. I was enjoying myself, still a young kid, yeah. supposed to be having this beautiful dream yeah. whereby everything's sail smoothly, nothing happens. Ram is around uh, the corner. Everything is sailing smoothly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you just grew from me, a boy from Soweto, yeah. Midlands, and then now there's this transition. Now yeah. you're playing for a top team like yeah. Bidvest Vets, and then suddenly now this thing is cut, yeah. like immediately. You know, growing up, because you used to have this water that yeah. when you anchor happens, new twisted, holy water, yeah. it fixes everything. <laughs> Trust me, that water used to fix yeah, anything. So it, funny. anything. <laughs> it used to fix anything. Yeah. Having to come in the Premier League yeah. now, having to tell me that you need to go for an operation. Yes. Your knee ligaments are torn apart. Yes. For me, that was like, geez, what do, what's happening? Yeah. This is not supposed to be like this. Yeah. It's not how I imagine this thing to go this way. Yeah. I imagine myself just hitting yeah. high numbers. Play. So, but then that for me, I think it was 89, and that realization started from there for me. Yeah. It started from there because this thing could end any time. Yeah. I could even come back and not be the same person. Yeah. I could even come back and be more, but yeah. you don't know. Yeah. You know? And Kaylin is pretty much touching on mm. the injuries, but yeah. I, I can add on other things like yeah. game time. Yes. On its own, it's, it's, it's stressful not yeah. to get game time because things are not going the way. So then what happens? Because yeah. if you don't get that recognition, teams can come to you and exactly. say, yeah. we can give you a contract. Yeah. And pretty much. You yeah. know, there's so many things that you need to like immediately. So for me, it was just an eye opener and saying, yeah. what comes next immediately? Yeah. You know? Yeah. But at the same time, I still want to say, like, what comes next after needs to be a passion. Yeah. It can't just be, you know, something that I fall into. Yes. You need to have passion for it, because when you have passion for it, you have time for it. Yeah. You have things to do. You put yes. so much into yeah, it. Yeah. So for me, I realized at 18, that happened. It was just, you know, an eye-opener. Yeah. And then when it happened again with sundowns, yeah. with the Achilles and the knee again. You're much it, more prepared. I'm much more prepared, it. but it now it even, even gave me a skill. Scare, like yeah. a deeper scare, like this thing is coming back twice or yeah. three times. Why is it happening? Yeah. So now I need to like start moving. I need to start moving, making that decision in terms of how I control this, what comes next after. Yeah. Yeah. Vila touched on it a little bit. Yeah. Fame. Mm. I mean, you guys are playing in front of thousands of people at stadiums, um, a whole lot more watching from home. and. And that sort of gets, you know, you garner so much attention. Um, the age of social media is also now yeah. making things a lot more, you know, bigger in terms of, of, of the, the kind of exposure that, that uh, you know, any sports person gets. How do you deal with it, Caitlin? There's no easy way to deal <laughs> with those things. <laughs> You know, you someone know, is trolling you and say, ah, but yeah, why is this Kaylin playing, yeah. you know? Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. social media, I always say it's a blessing and it's a curse yeah. at the same time. I've, um, sorry, yeah. I've seen that, uh, I think it was Welcome, mm. yeah. where it was you in competition with, with Andy, Andy. Andy. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure there's no way you could avoid that. Yeah. It was there. 
No, it you was know, there, yeah. front page, yeah. center. Yeah. how you dealt with it. Yeah. Your, your performance is also. Yeah. And that also, you built yourself up, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. And it's good competition. Yeah. Like you know, 100%. And yeah. I always say, like, competition never hurt anyone. Yeah. Like, you won competition as a footballer, as a swimmer, yeah. as any athlete yeah. or any person, like, even corporate, if you're competing with the CEO, I'm sure like you see yourself yes. there. So I feel like competition is a healthy competition is the best thing you want in yeah. a team. And um, for me, like as much as everything was just blown up and mm. you know everything was there, I just tried to focus on myself yeah. and focus on the team and focus on what I can contribute. Yeah. You know, because the more and more I saw these things, it yes obviously it does get to you sometimes mm, like mm. you know some comments you don't expect it but it's there and you're like whoa like, like <laughs> yeah. they actually thought about this mm. you know and um but yeah it it, it, it is hard yeah. it's really hard but i think it's also just the people that i have in my circle yeah. you know and um you know my ther I to go through yeah. therapy yeah. and all of that so um yeah it it's it was the toughest moment of my life yes. but also it made me the strongest you know mm. i really came out of that tournament a lot stronger yeah, mentally yeah. you know um, because I knew exactly what it was that mm. I needed to contribute to the team Absolutely. and I mean obviously some people always had different opinions but I mean everyone's entitled to their yeah. own opinion and I know exactly what it, what it took for me to get to that point yeah. um, you know I had to work super hard yeah. you know every day people things that people don't even see yeah. you know um, so yeah, it's it was it's still tough. Like just thinking about it, you mm. know, and I'm like, whoa! Like I actually went, went through, through that, that, you know, and yeah. like not for one second that I ever think that you know I would be seeing all these things on yeah, social media about myself you. because I never really, I never see myself as a celebrity. Yeah. You know, I'm just a regular girl from PE. Playing you know, football. I'm from the ghetto. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just. As you grow older, you 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 create this thick skin yeah. for you know these things, and I think it's also just confidence, yeah. you know, confidence in myself, confidence in my ability, but also just having the confidence of my teammates yeah. and you know the people that you know love me and you know are there for me. So yeah, that's why I always say your circle is so important yeah. um, because you know your circle can either break you or make you, yeah. and like with fame and all of that things yeah. like. If your circle is about that, then you're going to be about it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think it's also just being mature enough yeah. to know what is right and what is wrong. And yeah, it's just trying to get through it. But yeah, mentally, no, nah, it's Tough. it's not <laughs> easy. Yeah. You know, you, you are in an even more competitive environment. You know, at Sundowns, you're expected to, you know, pitch up every time. You know, th there's a lot more attention now because you're winning. Um, how did you deal with, with, I mean, you mentioned the, the fact that you come from Soweto, it, it's a township, and, and most of us come from, from, from South African townships. To make the transition, and you know, you, you know, people know who Sbusa Zofilagazi is, and they want a piece of your life, a piece of your career. How do you navigate those things? I think from Bidvest, because you know, we came from Bidvest, yeah. whereby that, that growth started to happen. Mm -hmm. Then won accolades over there, 2014, 10, 2013. Then, of course, having to have won that, having to come back the season, can you do it again? Yes. And then, of course, now football happened. Play of the year, yeah, season, yeah, play of the year that season. So now having to do it again, yeah. can you do it again? Yeah. Can you do it again? And it's not, now it's question like people asking those questions, yes. not questions I'm asking. Yeah. So for me, when it happened, I already adjusted those questions because it's a question that I, when it started to say, I wanted to do it again. Yes. So hearing it from the next person, it, I mean, it's just something else. Yeah. It's something that I didn't need to hear because yeah. I've already asked myself, can I do it again? Which is, I wanted to do it again for my side to show that, you know, you're good enough now yeah. to take this thing to another level. And then, of course, it never happened. Got a, a few setbacks while I was yeah. there, ankles, and I had a few surgeries with my ankles. And then now having to switch and then, of course, having to have a price tag yes. switch to Mami Lodi Sundowns. Yeah. It was something else because you're coming with your trophies hey, also. you are coming with the price tag. I don't know what you're coming, <laughs> you're coming with the price tag. Yeah. You know, I haven't kicked the ball, but you're coming with the price tag because yeah. alone the price tag says a lot. Absolutely. What you're coming in because I'm coming with the football of the season, why can't we do it? But coming in also, you're coming to a team that's already moving now. Yeah, yeah. You already had a CBD that was in yes. in the time 
already now. Well, I'm trying to fit yeah, try to fit myself. Fit I'm asking myself, where am I gonna fit here? You know, I, <laughs> this coach sees a lot in me, but where am I gonna fit in this? But of course, having the confidence of saying, you know, not being arrogant, not being cocky, yes. just having the confidence of saying, you know, I'm being brought in here to mm. help in and contribute. Mm. So while I'm in here, I'm here to contribute. Nothing else. I'm here to contribute. I'm not here to try and bring back the season that I've had at Pitbull's Base. No, I'm trying to compete in this team that's already old, winning titles. Yeah. And mind you, that season, the, it was a road to winning yeah. the, champ, uh, yeah. the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, for me, it was exciting. It was already exciting because mm. of it was a, a stop whereby I had to go to Denmark to Bromby. Yeah. And then uh, finances never happened. They threw yeah. the teams, and then for me it was it was it was a uh, what can I say? It was a breakdown for me. Cause was it disappointing? It, it, it not even happen? disappointing because I was close to it because mm -hmm. I already went there. Yeah. Get met to them, and then we have discussed everything in terms of they're happy because I went in there for like a month with yeah. a trial, yeah. and then they were happy with me. And then while the season was still in, and then I came back, and I thought we had finalized, finalized everything. everything. So yeah. going through that season, having to hear that the negotiations had a stumbling block, it was very it was very sad for me because yeah. that was my ticket out now yeah. to go and explore like European football and then in a team like Bromby, I mean in Denmark yeah, and I've seen uh, likes of Zuma having yes. history at Copenhagen yes, yes, yes. Uh, so had a history yeah. at uh, I think Elspok or what Elspoke, yeah. so I also wanted to put myself somewhere there but it never happened but then of course fast forward everything switch up and then Sundowns is on another um, is on another train of conquering Africa yeah. so why not let me jump in maybe yeah my road will, different, will still yeah. climb up again and yeah. meet Europe but then of course life happened yeah. well, I start winning titles on the other side yeah. and, and it was beautiful you know I think for me the thing that I was pure about it yeah. was coming into a team to contribute Absolutely. purely contribute not to come in and be a superman yeah. you know sing yourself out and be a hero no yeah. it was there just to win championship and champ and those championships came in one, two, two three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, so much to carry. Yeah, so much to carry. <laughs> no, no more fingers. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that on its own, it was beautiful. It's yeah. a beautiful story. I mean, for me, the game is all about winning championships yeah. and to have it in it with to win it with the group. Yeah. It was very beautiful with that group of people, yeah. and of course, you know, the Yellow Nation. Yeah. It's always uh, good memories yeah. uh, to speak about. Yeah. Karen, what was your lowest point in your career so far? I mean, it's it's, it's a, still an active career. Both of yours, your mm. careers are still active. But so far, what what can you pinpoint and say, you know, that was the most lowest point of my career, and it really almost broke me. I think, what well, well, it started out 2018 when we had Afcon in Ghana. Yeah, and we lost in the final against Nigeria. Yes. on penalties. Yes. Um, and that was a that was a really tough one because we were we were good then, yeah. Um, and we thought, okay, this is the team we're going to win. We're yeah. gonna our first title. Um, and then obviously four years went by, and I just thought, you know, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Yeah. Um, because then I wasn't as strong as I am now. Like mentally, I never worked on the mental side. Like I just, I'm just an easy-go-lucky person. Yeah. You know, I. I laugh things off like if it's a serious matter, I'm laughing, yeah. but people think I'm joking, yeah. but I'm not yeah. really. It's just a mask, you know, because yeah. I hate confrontation. Yeah, I hate I you, yeah. dealing with, you know, serious matters. Yeah. I'm just not about it. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then obviously fast forward and I think going to the 2019 World Cup, it was hard, but I think also we were in a different space yeah. at the time. But yeah, as the years went by, um, I'll definitely say this past World Cup, the 2023, as much as it was a, a massive high for yeah. us individually, as a team, you know, as a country, it was also my lowest. Um, and that's when I also kind of played with the idea of maybe this is not for me. You know, maybe this game is not for me. What? Maybe, yeah. And You're at a World Cup. <laughs> I know that's what I'm saying Kids, like yeah. as much as it was a massive high and like the pinnacle of my yeah, career yeah. Um, I also really felt at the lowest like meant just because of everything that we were dealing with yeah. and what I was dealing with especially when it came to social media yeah. and people you know having these opinions about me and you know some of it were personal and 
obviously those things kind of it does get to you yeah. as much as you want to brush it off or say ah you know i don't care about yeah, it yeah. but part of it part of it was eating me yeah. up alive and yeah. at some point i just switched my phone off um i didn't use it for until we left australia yeah. and i think that was the biggest thing for me i think that was a really good thing that i could have done for myself off. yes yeah. And yeah, so I think that was definitely my lowest because I was obviously playing with the idea of maybe I'm done, like mm -hmm. I can't, like my mind. Because obviously for goalkeeping, mental, yeah. your mental toughness, it's tough, yeah. if it's not there, yeah. you can be as physical, fit, physically yeah. fit as anyone. Yeah. But if you're not in it mentally, it's hard. Yeah. The position becomes even harder because mm. then you make, you know, mistakes that, you know, you would never do yeah. or you would kick a ball the way and you're like geez you that's not me you, you know find the wrong Ramale, but, but you find going, that way yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so there's so many things but yeah i think the world cup was definitely the biggest high but also the biggest low for me yeah, that's crazy man yeah that's really crazy villa villa the family man how is he like you know we always see Villa in, in t on television, kicking a ball around, scoring goals, you know, bringing this amount of happiness to millions of people. But there's a small circle that, you know, that you come from that you return to when you're done kicking a ball around on national television. Who's he? How do you value that guy? Yeah, that guy, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sad. He's, 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 he's a sad. He's, he's tired. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's tired. Yeah. Yeah. I try to reserve some energy. I get you. <laughs> I get you. Yeah. Normally you come back, you're tired, but you try to reserve some energy now for my little daughter. Always, always try to reserve because I know it's going to be uh, another, oh, how can I say, 90 minutes of play, <laughs> even extra time, even yeah, go yeah. to penalties, yes. and she doesn't understand. Mm. She doesn't understand anything. So it's that like, it's like switch. Yeah. You, know, you just switch and they say, you know, as much as you say you're tired, you, you can't be, you know, you can't be. And it's beautiful to always come back to that, you know, especially having to come from work because of, I mean, you meet different people over there. Yeah. Like, it's your escape when you're not at home. Yeah. And then you're having to come back again. It's always, for me, it's almost joyful. And it's almost beautiful, I must say. It's almost beautiful. It's almost beautiful because of, uh, she keeps me energetic because that's why I do my yoga. <laughs> 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 she does a lot of stretching. I find myself doing a lot of yoga. I'm like... Yeah, this stretch is very painful. I don't know how you do it, but <laughs> 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 hey, yeah, it is. Yeah. But then it helps with my stretching because, you know, for you to your career to get an extension, yes. you know, you need to be very, you know, look after, you. look after your body. You know, you need to be fit also, you know, so that it can extend. And then it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I want to close off with a small game, small game, very small. Um, it's a game of who would you rather pick. And it is not personal on okay. anyone. Okay. It's just who would you rather pick? I start with you, Kaylin. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, or Jermaine Silposen? Oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the worst you could have done. <laughs> I need, I need, I need you to pick one. They both have such a special I'm, place I'm in my heart. I need, to, I need one answer. Oh, my God. Remember, it's not personal. No, it's not personal. Yeah. Okay, I'm going with my home girl, yeah. Jermaine Supersingway. Jermaine Supersingway. Okay. She's my ride or die. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Vila? Um, Klompo Kekana? Or Kama Billiard? Klompo. Shampoo. <laughs> Shampoo. Shampoo. Okay. Shampoo. Uh, Shampoo. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think Shampoo because, okay, Shampoo because of it gave me a few assists. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's a symbiotic yeah, relationship. But both of them equally, yes. equally gifted, different departments. Yes. Uh, if I'd say, put Shampoo as a striker, I'd say, and he gave me that question, say Shampoo or Kama, I'd say Kama. Okay. Yeah. Right. But then I'd say Tompo in the midfield would Kama, I'd say Tompo. Okay. So you see where I'm going. All right, all right. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. <laughs> but uh, he has given me a, quite a few assists. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. But just to hit the net with those assists, it was, it was beautiful. So Tompo. Okay. All right. Okay. Caleb, um, 
Port Elizabeth or Pretoria? Port Elizabeth. Nothing beats the beach. Exactly. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, okay. I won't even try and. <laughs> I won't try. Even. Um, Vila. Maybe let me stand down a bit with this. It's not oh. personal. Uh, bit with this. Yeah. There's a start and there's a beginning. Yeah. So that's where it started. For me to be known, bit with this. Yeah. Then I was seen there. Gradually grew up from there. Yeah. So bit with this. Yeah. Are you going to hit me with all <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's the final one for okay. you, Kevin. Um, Mercedes-Benz or BMW? That's a tough one. I'm going to go with Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes AMG. Okay. Yes. You're an AMG girl. I am. Oh, yes. okay. So one day when I'm a celebrity like Villa, like Villa yes, hopefully yes, I'll be able to afford yeah. that okay. car. Okay. Look, we'll make it happen. Yeah. Don't worry. This is the first part of it. Don't worry. But yeah, that's, that's a, a car I see myself in one day. Okay. 100%. Yes. Villa, yours? Um, final one? Uh, Soweto or Medrand? It's easy. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> so it's so it's <laughs> Why so? I'm born in Soweto. Uh -huh. I grew up in Soweto. Yeah. So, yeah, for for the person I am, yes. I grew up in Midlands. So yeah. that's the story. It begins. Okay. Yeah, it's simply that okay. where the story it begins. Uh, yeah. Midrand. Midrand is, mid yeah, yeah. mid is where I used to work. So, uh, but the, as I say. It, in any story, there needs to be a start. There needs to be a beginning. There needs to be yeah. the, the middle part, and then there needs to be the end. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe the end will be in Madrid. Yeah. Man City or Madrid? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. That's a very important one. Man City or Madrid? Is it for both of us, me yeah. and Kaylee? Yeah. Madrid. I like Real Madrid. Madrid. Legacy. Yes. You liked it because of what? Yesterday? No, <laughs> just in general. Legacy. But yes, yesterday was. <laughs> Legacy, Kayla. That's that's all you gotta say. Yeah, yeah, but my blood is red. Okay. United. N hell no. Liverpool. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You're still, a city man. Still say though. Still say. You're so, a city. Yeah. Man. Bit, You're a city. bit yeah, disappointed. Yeah. 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 Bit disappointed. But yeah, yeah I'm, I'm still I'm still I'm still city this, man. This this new city this, uh, <laughs> well, listen to this. Listen to this. I'm yeah. still a city man, and until if Pep leaves. Then you leave it. Kenneth Swartz, of Villagazi, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope you, you really progress in your careers individually uh, and, of course, in your future endeavors beyond just the game because it's so important to, to be able to still contribute not just on the football field but in other spheres after you're done playing. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and hopefully we'll have a, a follow-up chat no, again absolutely. in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the next one I'll be a celebrity. Exactly. You can rock <laughs> up in an AMG. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, I hope you enjoy that episode uh, with Caleb Swat and Spusas of Vilokazi. Please tune in to Kai 959. Like this and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time.